Okay, in this video, I'm going to be using Kodu Game Lab. Now, if we search for Kodu, you'll find there's two options. There's Kodu Game Lab and there's Configure Kodu Game Lab. We don't need this one. It chooses things like the uh, quality of the gameplay. It also lets us change the location. We're going to use this one for today. Now, Kodu lets us create our own landscape. It lets us choose our own characters. And then it lets us program those characters to respond differently in the environment we create. So this is what we're going to be doing today. This is Kodu. And when it first loads up, it gives us the option to sign in. We can create a creator name and a pin. We're going to ignore both of those and just press OK. Sometimes you need to press twice. Now, on the main screen, we've got the option to create a new world, to load a world, to import a world from other places, and a range of other options. But we're going to start today with new world. And we're going to use this one here. Now, when we first go on to Kodu, there is a home option. This takes us back to the menu. If we go in there by mistake, just press edit world. It'll take you back into your edit world. Play takes it into what the gameplay will look like, but because we haven't created a world and there's nothing actually in here, there's nothing actually to play. So we press the escape button to go back to the main controls. The hand lets us navigate. So if I use my right hand mouse button, it moves left and right and up and down. If I use my center mouse button, I can zoom in and out. If I use my left hand mouse button, I can change it forwards and backwards for the location. And these become very useful. The object tool, if I click on here and then click on a location, lets me place an object, whether rocks, whether code itself, the rover, but then there are a whole series of sub menus and we'll come back to this later. Again, if I don't want to be here, I press escape, escape again. The path tool lets me add paths that objects will follow, but we're not going to worry about that for now. The one we are going to use today is the ground brush. Now there's two options within the ground brush. We can choose different shapes, or we can choose different colors. So I'm going to choose different colors to start with. And click on that again. And then use the arrow keys to move across to the one you want. So I want this kind of pinkish greenish one. I'm going to zoom out a bit so I can see. And you'll see I've got a large kind of um, square that I can paint with. So if I use my left hand mouse button and paint, I can paint my world. I can go back onto here. I can click on the colors again. I can use the arrow keys to go across. I can choose another color. Try to use more than one because later on it will become more useful. You'll be able to program your characters to respond differently on different environments. Okay, so a little bit of land here. I can, once I've got my land in place, go on to up and down to create hills and valleys. So if I click here, I can start to bring the land up around the edge. And if I hold on longer, you'll see it goes up higher. Right the way around. It doesn't have to be at the edge. You can bring some around the middle. So let's bring the whole of this middle up a little bit. So it creates more of a kind of a 3D effect for uh, our creations and our characters to explore in a little bit. If we've gone up and we don't want to, the right hand mouse button also takes them back down. So left brings them up, right brings them down. And that applies to most of this. The same here. If we go to the make ground smooth or level and press the left hand mouse button, find it smoother to off. Use the right hand one. That's a different effect. With the rough ground, if we press the left hand mouse button, we can make very rough. So we can build the edges up which looks really impressive, but it does make it quite difficult for your character then be able to be able to navigate that. If we go to the water option, and again, there's different colors of water that we can use the arrow keys to go across. I'm gonna stick with the basic water. If we press the left-hand mouse button, the water level comes up, and it comes up for the whole world. So you can fill the whole world so it's underwater. Or you can press the right-hand mouse button, and it goes down. If you've got a few raised areas you can kind of have the water level so it fills just this lowest level if you haven't you can go back and you can bring it up some of the creatures will navigate happily on the water there's one called flying fish which will do that particularly well some of them won't it is possible to reprogram it 
but it's probably good at the moment if we've got a mix of land and water, high and low ground. And once we're happy with this, we're just going to go back to the home menu. I'm going to save my world. Now, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to want this to develop. So at the moment, I'm just going to call this test world. And if I want to put a description in, I can. But I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'm just going to press save. Again, if I want to make further choices, I can go back to the home menu. I can now either go back into edit my world or I can go exit and from exit I can quit. So it gives us a few options for how to get around at this point.